Today, let's take a look at Afternoon in Paris, chord by chord, and learn how to play the chord progression using drop two and four voicings. These voicings are very effective and consistent and ideal for beginners to start grasping what each chord in a jazz standard is made of. We actually talk about this in our Advanced Piano Tricks course, uh, so check that out if you want to take a look at this idea from a slightly different perspective. By the end of this video, you'll be able to play the chords in the song like this. For this video, I'll be using the notebook from the Jazz Standards Progression Book with the Grand Staff. This is a very useful resource since it has all the Jazz Standards all laid out for you with the complete form and chords on an empty grand staff, which will save you tons of time. So here's Afternoon in Paris. I'll write a treble and a bass clef, and I don't need to add any accidentals to the score since this song is in the key of C. By the way, if you're wondering why there are no clefs in the book, this is because these notebooks were made to allow for different types of arrangements. So maybe you want to write for two guitars, which would require two treble clefs, or for viola and cello, or oboe and clarinet, which will use different key signatures. Okay, so the first chord is a C major 7. So I'm going to write a C note on the bass and then write the thirds on top. Remember, all these chords are seventh chords, so we need the root, third, fifth, and seventh. So most of the chords are going to look like four notes on spaces or four notes on lines. Now let's make sure we have the correct accidentals for this C major 7 chord. A major 7 chord is built with all natural intervals, 1, 3, 5, and 7. So is C to E a major 3rd? Well, yes it is. Then I don't need any accidentals on the E. C to G is a perfect 5th, and C to B is a major 7th. No accidentals needed for this chord. Now, this is what we call a C major 7 in root position, because the C is on the bass. And this is a closed voicing, because the notes are written in the order they appear starting from the C note at the bottom. So if I take the top note and the second note from the top, and I move them up an octave, I get an open voicing. This voicing is called a drop 2 and 4 voicing. Look, if I write this same C chord up here, and then number the voices from the top as one, two, three, four. So B is the first voice, G is the second voice, E is the third voice, and C is the fourth voice. And then I drop the G and the C, voices two and four, an octave below, we get the same voicing. That's why we call this voicing a drop two and four voicing. It just happens to be easier to move the first and third voices up in our case. Okay, so now we have the C major 7 and a drop 2 and 4 voicing. These types of voicings are called open voicings because the notes are placed with gaps in between them. The interesting thing is that open voicings offer a more consistent sound across the keyboard. They don't get muddy or harsh as easily as closed voicings do. I'll keep this voicing for the C major 7. Next is a C minor 7. Again, I'll write a C on the bass, and then the other three notes on top. A minor 7 chord is a 1, flat 3, 5, flat 7. So I'm going to have to flatten the E to an E flat, and the B to a B flat. Then we can move these two notes up to build our drop 2 and 4 voicing. F7. Let's write the four notes. Now, a dominant chord is a 1, 3, flat 7. So is F to A a major third? Yes. F to C is a perfect fifth. That's good. And F to E is a major seventh, but we need a flat seventh or a minor seventh. So we need to flatten the E to E flat, and we have our F7 in root position closed voicing. We move an octave up, and we have our drop 2 and 4 voicing. B flat major 7. B flat, and here's all four notes. I don't need to add any accidentals. B flat to D is a major third, B flat to F is a fifth, and B flat to A is our major seventh. Perfect. Then we turn it into a drop two and four voicing by moving these two notes up. B 
B flat minor seven, same thing. B flat here, here's all four notes. Now, I need a flat third between B flat and D. So the D has to be flat. B flat to F is a fifth, that's good. B flat to A is a major seventh, but we need a flat seven because this is a minor seven chord. So A has to be flat. And then move the notes up. D flat seven is a dominant chord, so it has to be one, three, five, flat seven. E flat to G is a major third, that's good. We have to change the B to B flat to make it a perfect fifth from E flat. And then E flat to D is a major seventh. So we need to change the D to a D flat to make it the flat seven. And now the drop two and four voicing. These are very simple, but very effective voicings. If you work like this on every jazz standard, you'll gain a pretty good understanding of jazz harmony and basic piano voicings. Not to mention, you'll train your ears to learn so much about intervals. As always, I hope this was helpful. I'll go ahead and add a link to the notebook that we were using and the advanced piano tricks that I referenced earlier in the video. Thanks again for watching. If you haven't done so already, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing us with your friends. Catch you next time. And if you've made it this far, YouTube seems to think you'll really like this content here, so check that out.